So what I'm gonna do now is load up my own personal obsidian. So you are looking at my actual second brain. This is a mess and I will go back to the saying that perfect is the enemy of the good. I love working on my productivity. I love experimenting with tools, but I also at the end of the day just wanna get stuff done. And if I spend all my time polishing my notes and making my system perfect, that would take all my time and I would never actually do anything. So I, I operate at a good enough level um, and this works for me, but it's probably kind of a mess to everybody else. So let's see what's in here. Um, I have all my notes in reverse alphabetical order. And the reason for that is that I begin each note with a date and timestamp. Uh, June 23rd, 2021, 0852 in the morning. I was referencing an old book which I don't actually like that much, but I was needing it for something. Um, before that, I recorded my dreams, something I do, uh, which I find really stimulates my imagination and has allowed me to see some uh, really interesting trends in my dreams correlating with uh, you know, how, how my waking life affects my dreams and vice versa. Um, what do we have? I've got notes for these videos. I'm working on a novel. I tentatively have titled Nakba. Um, Arabic word for disaster, um, character from Nakba, some thoughts on the book Deep Work by Cal Newport, other books I've been reviewing for these videos, Flow. Over here, we have a list of tags. These are a huge mess, partly because I sometimes use tags of my own and I've started importing journal articles that come with their own tags. I just started that, so you'll see a lot of these like ethnicity, which is a tag from a journal article I didn't apply the ones that tend to have the most notes are ones that I do. I, all my ideas for blog posts have notes. That's probably my biggest. Um, so when you have a ton of notes and you can see here, you know, how many I have going back years, uh, you have to create your own system to navigate this. And that's part of the challenge and the fun of a Zettelkasten is creating your own navigation system to help you recall and make those kind of serendipitous connections that you want. Um, I intended this one that says start here to be that way. It's got a Greek letter because in the um, computer alphabet that comes after the English alphabet, so that note will always be at the top, um, where I link to some of my main ones. My usual starting place is my to-do list, which is admittedly a huge mess. I've got a few life to-dos here, We're planning winter vacation, which has its own note. Um, I showed in a previous video that you can link to particular sections of notes. So what I have here is I have a separate to-do list for these different things in my life. My house has a long to-do list. I have a to-do list for SAS, eating glass. I'm still working on publicity for my book and there's various tasks associated with that. But when I compile this, all of those to-do items get, uh, get put, uh, right here in one place where I can see them. And if I click on them, what it does in the back end is it will put an X in these and, and check the box. I generally have a separate note for each project I'm doing. So for you as a SAS student, maybe you have one note for each course paper you're writing, one note for your thesis of everything that needs to be done. For me, I'm always working on everything from writing projects to blog posts to I'm outfitting a trailer, camper. I'm trying to figure out some more effective workouts for my rock climbing. Um, all that goes here. We don't need to look at all of that. Um, but let's look at, you know, an example of maybe a book. So Clausewitz on war. Here we go. I imported all of these notes from my old system in Evernote. I went back and adjusted the date stamp to match. I like being able to see the dates because I can, can see how all my thinking has evolved over time. I also slosh together all my notes on, you know, SAS or a personal journal or some piece of fiction I'm writing because I think rather than stovepiping each of those, it's fascinating to see uh, how these different parts of my life intersect and in, in the timing of that. Anyway, um, the reason this looks kind of funky is because I write in a tool called LaTeX, my academic work that uses special... Um, quotation formats and they render in obsidian kind of funny this red which I, I don't like but that's a 
that's maybe the one thing I don't like about Obsidian. I've got all these quotes I pulled. My notes, you can tell, are not well organized. Right now, I haven't gone back and added links across ideas because this is all, again, an imported note from a long time ago. We can look at a more recent note. We'll go to Beinhacker, who I keep referencing, one of my favorite books. This is a SaaS book. So these are a little bit more up to date. I've got uh, a hashtag books. I've got a note for 660, the course, where I link to all the other books. Um, all right, this is day one of the course, so you can expect me to do all of this stuff, some administrivia, um, introduction, kind of core ideas. I have lots of discussion questions, and you know we've got these nice section titles. I can do the command E to break this into HTML. I could style all this. I need to get around to doing that, put in different colors. I just haven't. Um, I also use uh, this for articles, which I'll talk about later. There's a way to export my notes from a different system right into this. So this is what one of my, um, one of my papers looks like that I've imported. Uh, I've got some special styling with a plugin. I can see the metadata, who wrote this article, The New New Civil Wars by Barbara Walter. I can see the abstract, links to the PDF on my computer. This is an article about Civil War, and I've got one of these master notes that links to all kinds of different topics. Civil War onset, duration, each one of these has a different literature, and I can start linking all those things together. A lot of this is me copying quotes that tends to be how I take notes. I copy quotes that are meaningful to me, that remind me what's in the article. And then if I uh, wanna write a paper, I've already got the quotes there, I can just pull them in. You'll see various links I've gone through on this article and done a pretty good job linking. Here's an anecdote from Mozambique. I've created a note for each country because now if I wanna write about that country, I've got links to articles and anecdotes that reference it. And I tend to only take notes on things that are within my area of expertise and academic specialty. So, you know, I, I won't hopefully get too many notes. My notes will all sort of reflect my own personal interests. And that's why it's important you take your own notes rather than using somebody else's. Um, let's look at how I use this for creation. So I have a blog. I don't maintain it very well, but the themes tend to be about entrepreneurship staying healthy as an entrepreneur, leadership, tactics, and a lot about mental health. So every time I have an idea for a blog post, it goes in as a new article. And uh, here's one in progress, risk black markets. Um, I've just got a bunch of stuff here, it's not done. I link back to the blog list so I can always get back there easily. And I've got my section titles. Some of these are done needing permission. It's one that should be published. Uh, anytime I want to, I can just post that. I've got some notes there. And what I find is by having this kind of playground to work, it's very easy to put a lot of, I don't know, just a lot of ideas on paper. Um, I've got another one for fictional stories. Some of them are done. Looking for a publishing home. Future ones. Stories I've abandoned. Um, I've got all kinds of random, you know, stuff here. Um, we could look at how I use this for fiction, facilitating creativity. Um, no, nope, that's not what I want. There we go. Go to black contracts. This was a short story I wrote about the space force on the moon, and I've got all these random ideas. Uh, I'm just sort of brainstorming. I just put all my random thoughts on paper to get the creativity going. But I had to start doing things to develop the story as I went. I needed characters. So I've got a whole character profile for this character who is an astronaut reservist for the Space Force who goes to the moon. Uh, I'll go back to the story. Uh, a couple other characters, another astronaut, Gary. Rajiv, a uh, hacker who works back home in the information uh, technology section of their company. Uh, I've been developing sort of a history timeline. I've also got articles on lunar construction because I got very quickly drawn into what would a base look like 
Um, I've got links and notes. Uh, and hey, you know what I realized as I went, I could reuse the same setting in a different story. So I've got links there. That's one benefit to putting everything that you're thinking in one giant Zettelkasten and instead of putting all your notes in stovepiped projects is you can start making connections. I could reuse any of these characters, settings across stories. Um, same thing for academic work. If I have some interesting anecdote uh, about the war in Iraq, I have it right there available to link to five different projects. Um, let's take a look at the graph view. So here is my Zettelkasten, and it is a mess. You'll notice a lot of these are, I don't even have them on. Let's see here. I have orphans turned off. I'm going to turn orphans on. Whoa, look at that. All those notes are orphans, which you're never really supposed to have in a Zettelkasten. These are notes that don't link to anything. Uh, Zoyuza, the Doom of Principal City. I believe that was a research article for a story I was writing about ancient Iran. Never linked it to anything. I would never find that article again if I had not just clicked on it. But by linking, you can start to see connections. So here's a huge cluster. Yep, that's what I thought, my blog. So from here, I can link and see all these different articles I'm working on. And some of these, okay, I've got a quote from a blog article to this Annie Dillard quote, writing monsters down into your subconscious, which also links to a journal article about feeling rejection. Okay, that's deep. We'll go back out academics this one's probably smaller than it should be don't look closely at that stories i got my fiction um every time i'm researching markets for my stories i create a new note for that market so i can kind of keep track of what's happening there uh my book eating glass i've got a lot related to that largely because of the marketing um we can do certain things like uh oh, we can look by tags it's interesting books. YOA, that's a Year of Annihilation, another fiction project I've worked on. Political science, that's a good, decent-sized cluster. My personal journals. Dreams is interesting. I, I put those there, and you know, one of the neat things about Zettelkastens is they allow you to make connections you wouldn't otherwise make. And by recording my dreams when I remember them and looking for connections, I've noticed some patterns. I, You will find a number in here yeah travel logistics dreams i started having noticing so many dreams about being stuck in airports or in broken down cars i realized this is a recurring anxiety dream i've never noticed that before but i started linking them i've also got dreams about crashing c-17s those are my two anxiety dreams so a little bit amusing but uh they go to show how you can put a zettelkasten to work um so this is my primary means of augmenting my brain. This is always open. I talked about three fingers swiping between desktops. I always have it one screen to the right. No matter what I'm working on, it's always there. My vault is stored in Dropbox, which means it's always synced. Every time I make a change, it gets synced immediately online. It's always there. Um, And we can pull up any of these notes and look at it, and it's just plain text, which means I could open this entire vault in a totally different piece of software. If uh, if Obsidian goes bankrupt and stops working, look, here's my vault in a different piece of software called the Archive. Uh, I've got the exact same notes with the exact same formats here. I can still follow the hyperlinks. So that is a quick tour of what Obsidian can do. I will have a couple other videos showing how Obsidian can link with Microsoft Kindle, Microsoft Amazon Kindle, and Zotero to get your notes out of your books and your PDFs. So we'll, we'll get to that.